After a man's mother passes away, it's time to clean her house. And then he makes a horrifying discovery. A bizarre and obscure conspiracy pops up and then disappears on 4chan, but has staggering implications. And then we take a trip to the Octavius, a boat that was spotted off the coast of Greenland in 1775. Is it possible that a boat became so encased in ice that its crew froze in place? We'll find out today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. Just a quick reminder, Halloween, October 31st here in Hood River, the River City Saloon. The band Sundiver is having their album release party. I will be there. If you're nearby, you should come check it out too. Sundiver is a great band. They're friends of mine. I really, really like their music and I will be there. So if you don't have Halloween plans, if you want to wear your costume to a local bar and dance to new music, come on out to the River City Saloon, October 31st. That's not a plug. They're not paying me for any of that, so they're just friends of mine. Let's go ahead and get started here. we got a lot of stuff to cover. A little grim. We're starting off a little grim. A little grim. So if you guys are like, all right, dude, I'm eating this big old burrito, this giant nine-pound burrito, you might want to put that away for right now. Pick it up (laughs) the next story if you have an appetite. Let's hop in the Jason Jalopy. We're going to drive over to St. Louis, Missouri. We're driving our car, right? Well, it's my car. You're simply a passenger in it. Don't, don't, Don't get it twisted, guys. We're driving the Jason Jalopy. It's not called the U car. It's the Jason Jalopy. We're dri- Unless your name's Jason, then I guess you can make a claim to it. We're driving to St. Louis, Missouri. It's July 30th. 2019, so not too long ago, a couple months ago, there's a dude named Adam Smith, right? And his mom is not doing well, so it's one of those stories. The mom is sick, and he moves back to take care of his mom, which I think is kind of like people always make fun of people who live with their parents, but there's a little asterisk there if you're taking care of them, then you really shouldn't make fun of who's living with who anyways. I've never been one of those guys, like, what? You still live with your parents and you're like 48? Like, I don't care where you live. That's some, I never really cared about that. But people do. Some people do. And they're jerks. And then, like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know someone who'd be like, what? You still live with your mom? Oh, what a loser, dude. How come you haven't moved out yet? And you're like, oh, she's dying of cancer. And they're like, what? Cancer? That's a lame disease. Oh, my God. That's so stupid. Like, I guess there probably are people out there like that. But anyways, Adam Smith. He moves into his mom's house because she's dying. And there's probably some guy like, what, Adam Smith, that's a lame name. And your mom's dying. That's totally lame. My mom's immortal. She'll never die. Like, who is this jerk? Why is this guy following me around? But anyways, Adam Smith's mother does eventually pass away. Now he's at the point where he's like, I got to start cleaning the house up. What else are you going to do? It's not like he's like, oh, wakes up one morning. He's like, oh, my mom's dead. Better clean up. Like, I think it was more of a nesting thing. Like, let's start getting rid of all this stuff. Because I remember when, like, my grandma passed away. We went over and we just started throwing stuff away. It's a weird, like, psychological thing. We're not like mementos, war medals, throw those in the garbage can. It's just like a weird, you want the house to almost return to a uncluttered state. It's really weird. Like, I remember when my grandma passed away, everyone went to the house and just started cleaning up. And I was like, don't we have better things to do? Play video games or something? No, I'm just joking. I love my grandma. But it was just a weird psychological thing because I even found myself picking stuff up. And I never clean up. Anyways, Adam Smith is cleaning stuff up. And he's like putting stuff in garbage bags and everything. Like, (laughs) I don't know why I needed that. You know how humans clean up. Anyways, he's cleaning up. Now, in the freezer, there was always... There's a bunch of like junk in, in the freezer and stuff like that. And there was always this box that she kept in the freezer. And ever since he was a little boy... He's in his 40s now, I believe. Ever since he was a little boy, there was a box that his mom said, don't look in that box. It's a piece of wedding cake. It's like an old memento. I don't know if that's just an American thing, but when people get married, they save a slice of the cake, of the wedding cake, and they put it away. I thought they were supposed to eat it a year, the next year, or whatever. I don't care, because I think weddings are kind of stupid, but... It's some sort of tradition. Now, she's like, don't ever look in that box. 
It's a piece of my wedding cake. Now, unless your wedding cake came from the Ark of the Covenant, I don't know why he couldn't look in the box, but she told him not to look in the box. Fast forward 40 some odd years, she passes away. Now, apparently, it, this wasn't a one time thing. This wasn't like he was six. And he's like, Mommy, what's in the box? And she's like, Don't ever look in the box. Apparently, this wasn't like, and it also wasn't an everyday thing. Hey, Ma, what's up? What's for dinner? Can I look in the box? And she's like, Damn it, Adam. No, you can't look in the box. But apparently, between asking every day and asking once, Somewhere in between those two, he did ask a couple times, hey, can I look in the box? And she's like, no, it's wedding cake in the box. It'll You'll turn to stone if you look at it. Anyways, mother passes away. He's cleaning stuff out. And he goes, I'm going to look in the box. I'm going to look what's in the box, see what's in here. So he opens the squeaky freezer door. Cobweb bats are flying out. I don't know what sound a bat makes. And he goes and he grabs the box and he opens it up. Now he says this box had been there as long as he's been alive. Now I guess you got I guess there's a bit of a spoiler alert. If there's a news article about what's in the box, it's not like a treasure map. I guess it could be a treasure map. It's a treasure map. But it's not a treasure map. He opens the box up and he sees like a little pink blanket. He's like, oh. And then he kind of like Sticks his hand into the box. Because maybe the blanket's like covering up some delicious wedding cake. He wants to get to it. He puts his hand in the box. He feels a tiny foot. So, in the box that's been in the freezer this entire time is a dead baby. And it's possible it's his sister. Which would be less creepy. Now... I, when I say dead baby, I don't, I'm not assuming it's like an eight month old baby. Because it can fit in a freezer. So I don't know, I don't know the dimensions of babies vis a vis freezers that are 40 years old. Wait a second, did she get a free, like, when her refrigerator, no refrigerator lasts that long. So when her refrigerator broke, you're like, Jason, that is not the point. That is not the point about how long a frigid air works. But no, stay with me. We'll get to the other part. (laughs) We'll get to the baby part. I mean, think about it. Like, how many times have you had... I've maybe had, like, one fridge go out in my life, and you got ah, load everything out. So you're telling me she moved this baby to two, maybe three fridges. And you're like, Jason, that's not the point. So go back to the baby part. Okay. Apparently, the son says my mom was always super secretive. She would never tell really anyone anything. One time I asked what was in her chocolate chip cookie recipe. And she slapped me across the face. That didn't happen. Don't sue me, Adam. But anyways, apparently she was super secretive. And he said, I also, she also made statements that I might have, like I had a sister out there that she gave it for adoption. He goes, but either this, this is a human baby. And the cops are like, yeah, this is a real baby. It's not an adult. So it's either my sister or some random baby. And I honestly don't know which one's more disturbing. He didn't say that. I'm sure. I I don't know. Jason Carpenter. We're back in me. I don't know which one is more disturbing. Finding a baby in your fridge. Or freezer. Sorry. The fridge wouldn't last very long. It'd be like a couple weeks top. Finding a baby in your freezer. And you're like, oh my god. My mom found or killed a random child. Stuck it in the freezer. That's pretty disturbing. Because then you're like, whose kid was it? Like, are they still looking for it? You open it up. And it's a sister, like a little baby. I wonder how old it was now that I... I don't know why they didn't mention that. Because, again, I don't think it was like a toddler. I think it was probably like a tiny little baby. Like, I don't know. A month? Like, it has to... Obviously, if the baby was too big... (laughs) You're like, Jason, again, why are you focusing... Okay, I'm not going to focus on the dimensions of the baby. The point is, is that a dude found a baby that might be his sister. This happened back in July. And it's interesting because he's saying, let's do some DNA on it, man. Let's find out if it's my sister. And the cops really don't seem super concerned about it. Because she's dead. So even if, like, let's say they do the DNA on the baby and it's not hers. And then what? Now they have this huge, like, now they got to go find a parent of a baby who went missing. And they're like, yeah, we got got more important. It's weird. I've learned doing this show because I've been having to research a lot more, like, current true crime stuff there's a lot of stuff cops are like yeah we're too busy 
And if there's not a victim and the suspect is dead, then we're not going to even bother with it. I'm sure they're doing something with this, but I'm sure the cop, you know, DNA stuff takes a long time and or a lot of money. I'm sure the cops are like, if it is someone else's baby and she killed this kid and threw it in a freezer, she's dead. So there's nothing we can do about that. If it's her own kid and she gave birth to it and threw it in the freezer, it's tragic, but there's nothing we can do about that. So I don't really think they're in too much of a hurry to get this DNA stuff done. And I don't think Adam Smith can go down to the coroner's office and be like, hey, can I get a couple toenails? Like, I think that window has passed. I think that any DNA he wanted to get from the baby, he should have gotten from the beginning, and that's disgusting. He's not going to be like, oh no, I made a horrifying discovery. Hmm, where's my nail clippers? So anyways... The gross story, guy finds a baby in his mom's fridge, and no answers. Mom, very, very secretive. So the moral of the story is if someone ever goes, don't look in that box, look in the box. That's the moral of the story. I probably would have looked in the box earlier when I was a kid, and someone said, don't look in that box, and I kept going, what's in the box? And they're like, don't look in the box. I would have snuck a look. But that story would have been horrible. Because then I might have ended up in a box. I'm going to do what they do in YouTube videos. You, Hey guys, you tell me what's what's more disturbing. Your sister in a box or a random baby in the box? Comment down below. Like and share and subscribe to this podcast. What do you think is more disturbing? Click on the poll in the left hand side of the screen. Okay, let's go ahead. Speaking of YouTube, that's actually a good transition. I came across this conspiracy theory. I don't even know if I would consider it a conspiracy theory, but... Something interesting leading to a conspiracy theory, probably about two weeks ago, three weeks ago on 4chan. Very, very, it was a thread that went up, had maybe 13 replies, and then disappeared. Got archived, no one was interested in it. The first post said, I'm not supposed to reveal any of this, but you guys don't believe anything anyway, so here you go. And it was a link to a paste bin file. So it took people a while to want to click on the paste bin file, because you don't know what you're going to get. And this is what it was. Now, I'm always intrigued by conspiracy theories that are mundane and believable and something that can happen. Hillary Clinton eating babies, shape-shifting reptilians, controlling the planet Earth, stuff like that. You're like, they seem to be the most popular ones, but they're they're just far, far too unwieldy. Hillary Clinton may or may not eat human babies. I don't know. I'm going to say that most likely not. But I could be swayed to the other side. However, I think so much time is spent determining whether or not Hillary Clinton... And the reason why I keep bringing that one, because that is probably, I think, the funniest conspiracy theory out right now. Because it's so specific. It's not reptilians are taking over the planet. That's very vague. NASA's trying to destroy the flat Earth myth. Those are kind of vague, because you're like, who, when, what, who's NASA? Well, I know who NASA is, but who at NASA... When did this conspiracy theory get started? They're pretty vague. Hillary Clinton eats human babies might be one of the most specific conspiracy theories because we straight up have the who. It's not just Democrats or politicians or whatever. The elite. It's this particular person does this particular thing. And it's because apparently she has holes in her tongue, which are caused when you eat human brains. It's some sort of brain waste. That's the first time I heard about it. But now this is a Hillary Clinton eats human babies episode. But that's 100% probably my favorite conspiracy theory out right now. There's some photos of her with holes in her tongue. And so people said, that's what happens when you eat human babies. <laughs> that's what happens when you eat human babies. And then they started basically working backwards. And then Pizzagate got involved in that. They're eating babies in Pizzagate. And then there was that video, Frazzled uh, frazzled Rip, or Frazzled Drip, depending on how you want to pronounce it, where apparently it's her and Huma Abedin eating a baby, which has been completely debunked. She doesn't eat, she may or may not eat babies. But anyways, this, apparently this is a baby episode now. Anyways, though that, that conspiracy aside, which I think is just absolutely hilarious. I like the more mundane conspiracy theories. I like the more things that can affect us, really. And this one actually affects me, I think, more than most people. So on this 4chan thread, this guy puts up this paceman, and it's a transcript of an interview. There is no sourcing for the interview. It's not telling us what show it's from. If it's a podcast, a YouTube show, we don't know. doesn't tell us the names of the interviewer or the interviewee. 
Very, very vague. So if this was about almost any other conspiracy theory, if they're like, we got a transcript from a show about aliens, and this guy says that aliens are coming down and make Hillary Clinton eat babies, I'd completely trash it. I'd be like, it's fan fiction. But because this one is so mundane and almost so unimportant on the surface, it's weird that someone would type out this transcript and totally make it up because it really doesn't have a lot of relevance when you first look at it. What it is, is this transcript, and I'll have the paste spin link, purports to be an interview between a host of some sort of show and a man going by the pseudonym of Tim C. And Tim C. says, I'm a social media influencer. And when YouTube first started off, I realized, whoa, this is going to be something big. So I got a bunch of fake accounts set up. I created a script. This was back when YouTube, you just needed an email account. So I started a script, made a ton of like about three to six million email accounts, and then got all of these YouTube accounts. And he goes, over the years, I've lost some of them. You know, they've been shut down for being bots, but I still have about three million fake YouTube accounts right now. And the interviewer goes, oh, so what are you doing? He goes, I actually started off by, if I saw a channel I really liked, I would prop it up. I would subscribe. You know, he goes, it used to be a million subscribers was a huge deal. So I would take a couple million of my subscribers and subscribe into this channel and it would boost them up. And people would be like, oh, I'm going to go check this out because it messes with the algorithm. People will be recommending the show. People will have the show recommended to them because all of a sudden the show has one, two, three million followers. He goes, but nowadays a million followers really isn't a big deal. So this is what I do now. I find the channel that I hate. I absolutely can't stand them and I watch them. I hate watch them. And then I go, oh, these guys totally suck. And I give them three million subscribers. So now all of a sudden the show goes from having you know, 10, 20,000 subscribers. And it doesn't do it overnight, because that would be obvious. But you send 10,000 subscribers checking it out a day. You think it's a viral thing. I've seen that happen with this channel. Now, I've never had a viral success. But I'll see a certain video or a certain... It usually happens on YouTube, because it's much easier. But I'll have a... Like, my Kevin Spacey video got like 10,000, 15,000 views in the first day. And most of my videos don't even come close to that over the course of their lifetime. He's saying that I watched this video and then I'll just start throwing subscribers. And as a content creator, you see you getting like 10,000 subscribers today. You're like, oh my God, I finally broke it. I'm, I've gone viral. Woohoo! Give me a high five, mom. Give me a high five, sister. It's just a box. It's just a little frozen box in the corner. You're like, I'll give you a high five later. And you have this go on. And the guy's like, that you said you hated these uh, YouTubers. And he's like, I do. So what I do is once I give them millions of subscribers and their growth starts to take off, I then continue to watch their content. And he goes, once they make uh, something like a content or a speech or a political stance or something that to me makes it seem like they're really like putting themselves out there or opening themselves up or making a statement that they feel very, very close to, very, very powerful to. So let's say that somebody comes out, they do normal content, and then one day they release an episode and they're like, I think I'm going to take a stand against bullying or teen suicide or something like that. Like, I had a friend who killed themselves and I want to take a stand against teen suicide. I want to start this donation thing, whatever. This guy, Tim C., will then unsubscribe with 3 million uh, followers like that. So to the content creator, they think they did something wrong and they totally freak out. And then he watches them backtrack and being like, I'm so sorry if I if I offended you guys with my anti-suicide stance. I didn't know I had so many people who were pro-teen suicide. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel my, my donation to the suicide people. I'm going to start doing Momo Challenge videos. Please come back to my show. Please come back. And he says he just does it for fun. He likes destroying these people's channels. Who... He doesn't like in the first place. And then he waits for them to do something that is very meaningful to them. And then he basically loses them. Now, so, and then the interviewer goes, do they do that all the time? He goes, yes, everyone but one person went, walked back on their viewpoints that they feel made them lose their subscriber, which they did because I'm watching it and I I took the subscribers away because of what they just said. 
Most of them have tried walking back. He goes, one person doubled down and was like, I don't care what you guys think. I'm still going to do this. And then the interviewer goes, did you give him the subscribers back? And Tim C goes, no, I was actually bored at that point and just kind of walked away. And at that point, the interview ended. So he had one person who actually doubled down and said, I don't care what you guys think. This is what I believe. Now, that's an interesting, and, and that went up, a couple of people replied to it, and then it disappeared. And this is the type of conspiracy theory that I think is actually far more impactful than whether or not Hillary Clinton eats babies. I'm not a baby, so it, don't, it doesn't really matter to me. Plus, I don't think it's true. It's not just that I'm like, ah, those other babies, they can fend for themselves. Hillary, <laughs> Hillary Clinton's running through the jungle looking for young people. To, I just love that conspiracy theory. Probably my favorite one right now. But anyways. This is a conspiracy theory that I think actually affects people because you go, well, I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm not worried about it. And that's true. But three million of anyone is very, very impactful. And you could do this thing with Twitter. He goes, I have different accounts with different things, but YouTube's the most influential one. But you could do types of stuff like this with Twitter or Instagram. You can prop up viewpoints that you like and destroy viewpoints that you don't. And a lot of people, the media does that, a lot of people do that, all, all sectors, they'll bury stuff they don't like. But I think the fact that you can have this one person basically causing people to like reevaluate their positions for fun, like this guy's doing this for fun, or maybe to maybe it's less fun and more like social activism, but a very, very bizarre conspiracy theory, but it's not sexy. There's no reptiles, there's no blood. There's no grand conspiracies. It's just the guy kind of messing with people on an individual level. But what happens is it does end up influencing content overall. Because if people are making a particular video, someone, they, all of a sudden they're super popular because they got 3 million views. Other people are going to start making content like that guy's content. But it's not going to get that big boost. And you're like, Jason, really, I don't care what type of content is being produced. And that's true. But... I still think it's an interesting thing because it's still a conspiracy that can affect you in that way. Plus, also, I was thinking about it this way. If all of a sudden I got 3 million subscribers and that caused the algorithm to recommend me to other people and I ended up getting, say, another 200, 300,000 real subscribers and then I take a 3 million hit, I'd be like, well, I still got a net gain of a couple hundred thousand subscribers. But I know what this is. If I didn't know what this was, and this guy did this to me, and all of a sudden did a rabbit radio, had 3 million YouTube subscribers, I'd be like, oh my god, this is totally awesome. I'm going to keep doing episodes where I rap at the end of each episode. That's how I got those. I'm actually not. It's fun. I think I this show, let's do a personal note here. This show happened at the right point in my life. Because I used to be just a total, I'm still pretty like cocky. But I used to be arrogant. I guess I'm still pretty arrogant. But I used to be more... Ag- I aggressively arrogant and I think I've this if this show if I started doing the show when I was like 24 25 it would have crashed and burned and I would have been insufferable to be around it's really really bizarre I think it happened at the right time where I was like oh cool people listen to the show oh, awesome when before I would be like yes people listen to my show it's amazing and I think that's just part of growing up and maturing Actually, it probably doesn't have anything to do with being like arrogant or cocky because I think those are actually pretty good beliefs. I think you should. I believe, I 100% believe this. No one will love you as much as you love yourself. So you better love yourself more than life itself. And I do. I do. Because no one else, if you don't love yourself a thousand percent, no one else will love you 500% or 100% or whatever. So anyways... And I think that's why when I use terms like arrogant and cocky, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, I love myself. I think I'm totally awesome. But when you, I think I was a total, I think I was super insufferable as a kid. And I could be wrong about that. I could be wrong about that. But I think if I had even the slight hint of the success I have with this show now, because the show's fairly successful as a podcast. It's not successful compared to like a television show or a breakout rock hit. But as a podcast, it's fairly successful. If I had that success when I was younger, I would have been, a, oh my God, I wouldn't have wanted to hang out with me. I'd be like, I wish someone ate you when you were a baby. <laughs> Why couldn't you have gone to the Democratic National Convention in 1992, young Jason? Let's go ahead. And I'm going to have to stop making the Hillary Clinton eats baby jokes, although I love them. Do we have time to do the Octavia story? 
I don't think we do, looking at my timer. Let's see. Do I have a quick story that I can finish this off on? We'll save the Octavius till tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we'll do a boat special. Do I have anything here real quick? I'll do a quick update on Veronica. I'll do a quick update on Veronica. Veronica is the haunted doll I bought off of eBay a while back. You're like, Jason, don't give me filler material. No, this is interesting. This is interesting. I bought Veronica the Haunted Doll off eBay a couple weeks ago. Now, the Vivid Drain, so I'm not on the nicotine anymore. And so the Vivid Drain, so let me start over. The Veronica the Haunted Doll was supposedly going to give you vivid dreams, the smell of women's perfume. You hear a voice go, hello, and doors open and close. So I've had it since, I've had it since before my birthday, which was the beginning of October. And this is what's... Ha- so I was having vivid dreams for a while, but I'm pretty sure I chalked that up to the nicotine withdrawal. I'm not on nicotine anymore. No doors are opening and closing, which actually happens a lot. And that actually happens a lot in my apartment because of the wind flow, but I've been closing the windows for winter. So maybe for the maybe for the ghost power to work, there has to be some sort of airflow coming through your apartment. Oh no, my doors open and close by themselves. At the same time the wind was blowing. Thank you, ghost. And then the the woman going, hello? I haven't heard that. Now, to be fair, my my apartment's not always super silent. I'm usually, when I'm here, I'm usually watching something or recording something or editing something. It's possible that all day long when I'm not here, a woman's going, hello? 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 And I'm just not hearing it. So, but I did have vivid dreams for a while. So I was like, could be the nicotine withdrawal, could be the baby, could be the ghost baby. But I, but let's go to the women's perfume one. This one is weird. So this the vivid dreams I go, well, you know, nicotine. This one's weird. Ever since I got Veronica, or maybe a week after I got Veronica, I sleep on my couch. I've always slept on my couch. So my bedroom is a pile of clothes, clean clothes on the bed. And almost every day when I go into my bedroom to grab some clothes, I smell the unmistakable scent of somebody smoking cigarettes in my bedroom. And it's fairly strong. Now, it's not like so strong I'm standing in front of, you know, Phyllis Diller or whatever with her giant cigarette being like, what do you want, love? But it's strong enough that I'm like, dude, someone's been smoking cigarettes in my bedroom. Now, here's the thing. I don't smoke cigarettes. And every so often I'll catch the smell of weed as well. But I'm like, I don't definitely don't smoke weed. I don't smoke cigarettes. And my windows are closed, so it's not that it, it would be coming in through the bedroom. It's possible it's coming through the bathroom window, but every so often I'll walk through the apartment complex, I'll smell weed. I've never walked in the apartment complex and smelled cigarette smoke. So the it, windows going outside are shut. And you're like, Jason, but what does any of this have to do with the fact that your haunted doll makes the smell of woman's perfume? You're telling us about cigarette smoke and the occasional marijuana. Either your doll is having more, <laughs> having a more fun social life than you. It's all standing on the street corner smoking a cigarette. What do you want, love? <laughs> it's Phyllis Diller's doll. Do you guys even remember who Phyllis Diller is? Wasn't she? No, that was Cloris Leachman on Malcolm in the Middle. Phyllis Diller was an old lady comedian. I don't remember if she had a cigarette or not. <laughs> that could just be my memory. Phyllis Diller was like on episodes of Scooby-Doo in the 70s. Anyways, anyways, Phyllis Diller. <laughs> I just like the name. And I think she smokes cigarettes. Anyway, so I go into my bedroom and I smell the smell. You go, what does it have to do with with uh, haunted dolls or perfume? For me personally, I love women who smoke cigarettes. I think that's like one of the sexiest. Oh, I'm going to say this too, guys. If you have just recently quit smoking cigarettes, do not go see Joker. I've wanted a cigarette since I've watched that movie. That movie is probably the best advertisement that cigarettes have ever had, or at least in the past 40 years. Where's it going? Oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I love girls who smoke cigarettes. I love kissing girls who just smoked a cigarette. I think that's like the hottest thing. I associate the smell of cigarettes with hot chicks, like are standing outside of a house at 2 a.m. and we're talking and we're drunk and she's smoking a cigarette and then we start making out. That's how I associate the smell of cigarettes. I don't associate them with Phyllis Diller. I don't associate the smell of cigarettes with, like, gross teeth and smelly clothes. I associate it as a perfume. So I'm wondering (laughs) if this doll 
is mo- this doll is most likely not haunted. Yes, it's most likely a piece of plastic that I bought off eBay that I paid thirty dollars for. Thank you, Patreons, also for donating money so I could buy Veronica. But if it was going to make the smell of woman's perfume, and I walked in and I was like, "Is that Eternity by Calvin Klein?" I personally don't find that attractive. Like, I'm not going to kick her out of my bedroom because she smells like she's dropping 120 bucks on some perfume. But I would much rather hit up a girl. I see her smoke a cigarette. I'm like, hey, what's up? And she's like, boyfriend just dumped me. I'm like, oh, really? This is perfect timing. I'd much rather be in that situation than be like, hey, you... You spent a ton of money to spray a chemical all over your skin. Smells good, but you don't smell like a human. And she's like, why, thank you. So who knows? The cigarette smell could be that. Most likely not. There's most likely a logical reason why my bedroom I never use smells like cigarettes. But that is where we're at right now. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Peace.